Um, it's so lovely to see you all again this morning and it's so lovely to see faces that we've been seeing and those folk who have been so um, supportive of this work this week. Um, it, it's really lovely to have seen so many of you joining us at different sessions through the week. Um, it, it's been uh, it's been quite a, a thing to get to this point, uh, but we're, we're looking forward to this session this morning. Uh, again, it's great to have people here from the five districts, um, from Sheffield, Yorkshire West, Yorkshire North and East Darlington and Newcastle. And it's really lovely to see you all here. We have a, um, a greater range of roles represented in folk here than we thought we might have originally for this session. So we've shifted our planning slightly, um, but we still hope that um, you'll find this a beneficial session and a beneficial end to, to what has, well, it's not the end because we've got uh, something tomorrow, uh, but of the Zoom sessions, it's the final one of the Zoom sessions. So uh, just to introduce myself, I'm Carolyn Godfrey and I'm the uh, Regional Safeguarding Officer. So I cover two districts. I cover the Darlington District and the Newcastle District. We also have here taking part this morning, Alison Hill, the DSO for Sheffield, and Katie Spencer-Madden, the DSO for Yorkshire North and East. Um, there they are. They're going to wave, wave uh, good morning to you. Just a few points of housekeeping. Um, as, uh, as we start this session, if you could remain on mute, this helps to prevent background noise and it also helps to prevent any echoey feedback, so it makes the audio clearer for everybody taking part. You are allowed to unmute yourself when you go into breakout rooms, so you're allowed to talk to each other then. We will be using breakout rooms this morning. Uh, those of you who have been attending multiple sessions will know that this week we've had the challenge not to have breakout rooms um, just numbered, but to have breakout rooms with different names each day. We've had animals and places and fruit and vegetables and chocolate. Uh, I'm not sure what today's is going to be, um, so I will leave you to that's the, the, the final breakout room challenge of the week to see what the breakout rooms are called. Um, we will also be using the chat function. Feel free to put comments or um, questions in the chat that will be being monitored through this, through this session. We are recording these sessions and we have been recording the sessions through the week. We will be making these recordings available um, as well as the PowerPoints that have been shared with us um, and they will um, come out or be made available sometime in the next uh, couple of weeks. The link to the act of worship that rounds off this week has been shared with circuits and should be on all the district's social media accounts. This is a, an act of worship that is being led for us by the five chairs of district. And we're really, really grateful for them um, and their support for this week um, and for the time um, that they've taken in putting this act of worship together. So we hope that uh, at some point, either tomorrow or in the coming days, you will be able to use that act of worship um, to, to draw our thoughts to a close um, on this week. We hope, we, I've said this at every session, and, and so far we haven't had major hiccups, but it is a new way of working for us, doing something as big as this in this way. We hope things will run smoothly, but we thank you in advance for your patience if we do have any hiccups on the way. Once again, I'm going to be starting our session with some devotions. And I will be reading again this passage from 1 Peter that, that has been at the heart of our thinking all the way through the planning for this week. Um, and it's the the... The Bible passage that's used tomorrow um, in the act of worship led by the chairs of district as well. Uh, and it's been quite a, quite an important passage to us as we've been thinking and planning for this week and for the speakers uh, who've been involved in, with us 
so far this week. So from 1 Peter chapter 4. The end of all things is near, is near. Therefore, be serious and discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. Above all, maintain constant love for one another. For love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Some of you uh, I hear who've attended um, meetings that I've done in, in my region for um, circuit and church safeguarding officers. And there is a reflection that I've used before, um, which I think sums up some of the, the fear and anxiety about um, safeguarding, um, but actually helps us see the, the, the joy uh, of its place within church life. And I'm going to use that this morning before we pray. Be open to the night. Pray with an open hand, not with clenched fist. Shapes loom out of the darkness, uncertain and unclear. But the hooded stranger on horseback emerging from the mist need not be assumed to be the bearer of ill. The night is large and full of wonders. Let us pray. As the hand is made for holding and the eye for seeing, you have fashioned us for joy. Share with us the vision that shall find it everywhere. And when your song of joy dies down to silence, come hold our powerlessness with love. Then shall our fears be gone and our feet set on a radiant path. Amen. At this point in previous sessions, I have been introducing speakers. This morning, um, I already have, because leading the session this morning is going to be Katie and Alison and myself. Um, so I'm hoping that they're going to be spotlighted now and I am going to hand over to Katie initially. Thank you. Um, just looking at, at the poll, I'm aware that quite a few of you have attended uh, other sessions throughout this week. So on Monday, we started with um, the gift of community where Deacon Tracy Hume was talking about how we potentially reach out and understand the community that we live in. On Tuesday, we had Eunice Atwood who was talking about the gift of empathy and how we can use that as a tool to be able to uh, empathize and understand others and how we can put appropriate boundaries in place to do so safely. On Wednesday, Richard Teal was with us um, and he was talking about the gift of place and how places can, every place can be sacred and people have found different sacred spaces during this time. But he also linked that in 
with the fact that um, sacred space very much links with a safe space as well. On Thursday, we had um, Phoebe who and uh, Lynn. Uh, Phoebe is our, our current youth president. And Lynn Norman works with the Connectional um, Teams as a children's uh, youth worker advisor. And they were talking about the gift of confidence and how we can instill confidence within our children and young people. And then yesterday we had Michaela Youngson who was talking about the gift of resilience and how we need to focus on our own mental well-being in order to be able to support others and potentially how we can do that creativity, create creatively. So today we are looking at bringing all that together and making this session a little bit more personal, a little bit more reflective in thinking about our own unique and personal gifts that each one of us has and how we can use those within the church and how we can explore with others how they and encourage others to use their giftings as well. Um, but if Carolyn and Alison are gonna join me, before we get started, the theme of this conference is gifts outside the box. Well, we would, thought we would flip that um, on its head and um, do a little bit of an icebreaker activity. Now, many moons ago, I, I trained um, to be a youth worker and you couldn't call yourself a youth worker unless you um, had in your toolkit at least 20 icebreaker game activities that you could just produce in a, in a mere matter of seconds. Um, so we are gonna try a little bit of an icebreaker, which is on Zoom is quite difficult to do, and quite challenging to do, but we're willing to give it go. So this is sort of a game really that's called, um, instead of gifts outside the box, it's gifts inside the box. So each myself and Carolyn and Alison have a box. And in that box is an item. And we, oh, that's beautiful, yeah. That, that box is not quite as beautiful as Alison's, uh, <laughs> Carolyn. In each of our boxes is an item, and we're gonna give you five clues as to what that item is. Now you can jump in at any point on the chat, if you can find your chat. If you're on a computer, it will be at the bottom. Um, if you're on an iPad or a mobile, it's usually at the top. And you can put in there what you think the item is. And obviously the first person to guess the item, we can't give out prizes on Zoom, we've not really thought about that. But we can, we can say that you have our utmost respect if you, if you guess what these items are. The clues are going to be incredibly cryptic. So if you do guess them, then again, we will be, we will be super amazed. And I'm quite looking forward to seeing what some of the guesses are going to be. So who, who wants to start off, ladies? Alison, do you want to go first with yours? yours quite I'll go first. Okay, here's my box. Okay, so first clue. It's a book. Oh. Quickly look at the chat, nothing coming in. I'll, I, will, I will keep an eye on the chat and see what guesses come in. Okay, clue number two. The Bible. Oh. Oh, Bible. No. So guesses of the Bible. It's not the Bible, no. I was told to make it harder than that. So this book has 603 pages. <laughs> Not CPD, no. I'll give you my third clue. Only certain people will find this useful. Only certain people will find it useful. Mm, the I've got you, I've got you. Oh, thesaurus, uh, oh. highway cord. Good guess. No. Good guess. They are good guesses. They are good Our guesses. Our manual. <laughs> yeah, that would be very useful. Okay. That would be very useful. Very good guess. Number four, it helps people celebrate major life and church events. So it helps people celebrate major life and church events. Music hymn book, cookbook. Methodist, oh wait, they're going so they're going so fast. We've got Methodist it. Worship book. Who was the first? You've got it. That? It's the Methodist worship book. My, oh, my Lynn, well done, well done. That was, uh, was Leslie to... Leslie Davenport. You got in there first, but very closely followed by David Goodall. Well done. Well done. Yeah. Was that on clue number four? The guest line. It was. Well done. 
Clue number five would have been, it includes the words, I am no longer my own, but yours. Your will, not mine, be done in all things. So uh, well done. Well done, everybody. Well done, well done. Now you kind of know where we're aiming at with these items. <laughs> it might help you with, uh, with some of the others. Uh, shall I go next? So I'll just show you the size of my, so this is my box. So it's a little bit smaller than, than Alison's. So here are my clues and I'll try and keep an eye on the chat as well. The first clue is that this item likes to go on journeys with you. The car manual would have been a good guess for, for, for this one as well, would it? Compass, ooh, good. Mobile phone charger, car key. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, these are all good things that go on journeys. Sat nav, sat nav, sat nav. This item, second clue, is very attracted to glass. A little bit cryptic. A ball. Uh -uh. I think that one's puzzled everybody. I'll go on to my next clue. You ideally need a Gin. <laughs> I think that might have been aimed at me. Oh, glasses. Tonic. <laughs> I feel like I'm being got at. Um, you ideally need a vehicle for this item. So definitely not gin. A mirror. Windscreen, nodding dog. <laughs> These are brilliant. These are brilliant, but no. Nope. Uh, camera. Oh. NT car part sticker. Oh, we, we, we're getting close. Um, this item features a Methodist orb and cross logo, and many Methodists seem to have one. I think we've got it. Oh, hey. we've got it. So who's the first one? I it is. It was Valerie Rushton. It, oh, well done. It is one of the, I had to go get this out of my car this morning. It's one of the Methodist car stickers. My last clue, if I'd have got there, would have been, you really do not want to show any road rage, road rage with one of these in your car, which is very true. Just be careful if you have one of those. Well done. Um, Carolyn. I, I really want a nodding John Wesley now. I've seen that in the chat. And I, feel, I feel somehow, when we were planning this, I think my two colleagues were amazed at how much Methodist I have in my house. Um, and, and the fact that the box I've chosen is it one from Publishing House just gives you an idea of, of the... Um, sort of stuff but I think a nodding John Wesley is something that's missing from our life. It is something that is missing from your household yeah I think we need one of those. We do have a bust of John Wesley and that was nearly going to be uh the thing in the box but it's not. So my first clue is that my item lives in a box. I would like a tortoise. The second clue is it comes with lots of pieces. Jigsaw. Oh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, we've wow, got it. wow. We've got it. This is going so quickly. This, I thought this was going to be harder. Kathleen Something. Jones. Kathleen Jones. Goodness oh, me. You, clue two. From two in my box, I have a portable communion set. That is incredible. Well which done. I hasten to add is not mine, but it's my husband's. Um, which is a so that was clue too. So I don't know whether to feel my you either warming up into the game or my <laughs> clues were way too easy. Um, what were the I rest of the clues, Karen? My colleagues had warmed you up nicely. Yeah, I think they, I think I think they've got the measure of what we were aiming at now. What were the rest of your clues, Carolyn? Um, it it was it's easily portable, but they aren't usually. 
Mm -hmm. And it's made of a range of materials, including wood, glass and silver. And you don't find these in many houses, only those of the ordained. Mm. I think most people would have definitely got it on that last one. Yeah. If not the others. Which is why I need to qualify that this belongs to my husband and not me. <laughs> Well, uh, thank you for indulging us in a little bit of method it's sort of um, game playing trivia. I'm going to hand over to Alison, who's actually going to officially start our, <laughs> our session properly. Alison. Thank you, Katie. Well, as, as Caroline's already said, it's been great to see so many people attending this week's conference. And it's been lovely over the week to start to recognise some familiar faces with people coming back session after session. It's been a busy week. As well as the conference, we've all been dealing with other things. Some will have been juggling family responsibilities, some will have been working. And I'm sure some will have been working on issues to do with church and reopening or not after, after last night's press conference, uh, depending on, on where you are. I sometimes think we are like bees in a beehive. Our churches and our homes and our workplaces are like the hive and we are the bees frantically flying in and out as we do all the activities with our lives. This morning we want to slow down and take a step back and spend time reflecting and refreshing. In the Safeguarding Conference this week we've been thinking about gifts outside the box. But for this part of the session, I encourage you to think about gifts inside the box, your unique box. We worship a loving and faithful God who has given us all gifts. No one is left out. We each have gifts from God. But how often do we stop and reflect on what they are? Mickey, in yesterday's session, challenged us to think about our own resilience. And so I would like us now to just stop and breathe and think about the gifts and skills God has given us. What skills do we bring to our roles in the church, but also what skills do we have for all aspects of our lives? I appreciate we're not very good at acknowledging our gifts, but just think what a family member or a friend might say about you if we ask them. We've got some calming images and music to play for you. So I just encourage you at this time to take time to reconnect with your true self and to discern or just remember what makes you special. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. 
soul over oh, oh my soul worship his holy name sing like never before oh my soul i worship your Thank you for that music and images. How could we not feel a little bit calmer after watching that? They're just beautiful, thank you. So, we've had a few minutes to think. If you would like to share any of your insights, and there's no pressure, but if you'd like to share anything you've just thought about, the unique gifts that God has given to you, please can you pop them in the chat? It might help people to read some of your thoughts and, and help them to perhaps connect that they ha also have those gifts but just didn't realize it. The gifts that you've been thinking about are gifts that you would probably use in church but also gifts that you would use outside of church as well. I was thinking about you know gifts that um, my family has and my mum's very talented in the garden. I'm rubbish in the garden. I don't know the difference between a, a flower and a weed and, and I don't get let loose in the garden but Having that knowledge, having that gift is, is, is really, is really uh, good because she makes our garden a beautiful place to be and a tranquil place to be. So we've all got different gifts. Now, I suspect that some people might have found this difficult because we're not very good for always recognising the gifts within us. It's easier to re recognise the gifts within somebody else than it is within us. But God has been gracious to each one of us and no one is left out. Thank you. I can see uh, something coming through. Bizarre sense of humour. I love that. I think that's a real gift. And um, how often is that useful in all aspects of our lives for someone who can bring a bit of sense of humour to things? Thank you. Funny, caring, loving, compassionate, friendly. What beautiful gifts to have been given and how much that will enhance everybody you come into contact with. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. We are truly blessed, blessed when you think about it. We have so many gifts. So I'm going to hand over to Carolyn uh, as we move on to the next part of the session. But just let's hold in our minds that these gifts of ours inside the box have been given to us like a present from God. We are very blessed. Carolyn. Thank you, Alison. Um, I think it, it, it is, I think as Alison said, it, it is much easier to see things in other people than it is. We're not very good at being personally reflective. And I think one of the, the themes that, that, that I, I've picked up in a number of the sessions this week is this, this idea that ties in beautifully with mental health awareness this week, this week, of that need to to uh, need for self-care and giving ourselves permission um, 
particularly those of us who are involved in safeguarding, it's not an easy thing to do. And, and you need to have something from which to give. Um, you need to have your own well-being taken care of. And I know Eunice was talking about this on Tuesday and it was picked up again in a number of the other sessions and particularly yesterday's session. If we, we're taking the image of the box again, um, we have our, our gifts sitting neatly inside ourselves, inside our boxes. One of the, the challenges is um, we have received these gifts. Uh, Kate, Katie's got this phrase of, of uh, a vending machine mentality. We have received and so should we give. Um, so we, we have received these gifts, we have these gifts inside our own box. And, it, and it's how we can get to a point where we can, we can break out of that box and share these gifts. And I know that there are quite often things pressing in on that box that, that, that stop us wanting to share our gifts or prevent those people we encounter in our lives, in our church communities, in our wider communities, in our work, in our families, so those things that, that put pressure um, and stop us from being able to share gifts. So these might be um, time pressures, they might be fear, they might be anxiety, they might be a, a sense of my gifts are sm so small, what good are they to anybody else? It could be all sorts of reasons. And again, it, one of the, the threads that's, that's come out of this week's thinking is how we can create spaces, how we can create that place and that confidence around us for people to be able to bring their gifts outside the box. So we're going to spend a, a few minutes now um, in, in breakout rooms, just again, please don't feel under any pressure to share personal things if you you can reflect on on people in your communities in your churches your family your friends as well as yourself and think quite widely about what those things might be that could be preventing people from sharing their gifts what in our churches is stopping people flourishing what is stopping them bursting out of their boxes and sharing their gifts and what are those, what are the structures within our churches and sometimes the relationships within our churches that might be preventing people doing that? And I think this, this last year when we've had such a, a pause in our normal way of doing church, it's a good time to reflect on our structures and our relationships within, within our churches. We, we, we may be starting towards picking things up again about are there things that we need to change to enable everybody to, to share their gifts and not just a small number. So the, the questions were emailed to you, they're also in the chat. Um, so we're going to go into a breakout room, breakout rooms for a few minutes. If you have anybody who is, has the gift, of willingness to feed back at the end from your from your um, uh, breakout room, that would be great. Um, it would be great if you could have someone identified who might be willing. Again, don't feel under pressure to, to share personal things. That's not what we're asking you to. We're just looking for that bit of space for reflection about what what things could be preventing people from using their gifts and what within our church structures, um, within our sacred spaces, and our relationships within our church could be preventing people from using their gifts. So we're going to spend a few minutes in breakout rooms now. Thank you. Is anybody willing to feedback? Shall I pick on a on a, a breakout room? What have we got today? We've got flowers today. Oh, cowslip. I love cowslips. I might pick on cowslip. Um, I get very excited when I see cowslips. They're my mother-in-law, they were my mother-in-law's, um, one of her favourite flowers. <coughs> Anyone from Cowslip um, like to share with us? If you'd like to unmute yourself. Uh, 
Oh, Janet, there you are. If you start uh, speaking. We, we talked about the, well, one thing was a reluctance to for people to be stewards because they were frightened of speaking in public. And I am one of those people. And, and that's one of our difficulties. It, one of the suggestions was that we could help people by somebody else doing the bits that they were afraid of. And that has worked in our church. Um, and we, we touched briefly on whether the safeguarding procedures could put people off. But I think we agreed that that was probably the case when we started doing police checks and see when it was CRB. But that people have now got used to that idea. We don't think that's the reason why we can't get volunteers for certain jobs. I don't know whether anyone else in the group has anything else they would like to say. Thank you, Janet. And I appreciate you speaking if you're a steward who doesn't like speaking. I appreciate oh, your... But what, I, what happened was that the first two times I was terrified and then I learned not to be terrified and that I wouldn't actually die if, if, I, if I said a word wrong. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, and that, that's an interesting, um, an interesting reflection because sometimes it is that fear that's stopping us using things. And if someone is, gives us a gentle shove or holds our hand or walks with us just to get over that, that step of, of fear. And I think, again, this, this is a, a, a good reflection on, on how we can create spaces in our church to allow people to flourish and and to encourage the use of these gifts so thank you yeah thank you for sharing that as well that's that's really helpful let's have what about apple blossom that sounds very spring like anyone from apple blossom like to share we didn't discuss who would but i'll say something if that's helpful thanks david um we had a, a value a rich conversation i think two things i'd draw out um well three things one is that we ask those who we know and we need to be much better at asking those we don't know um i think the second was that some of our roles are huge we reflected on the model safeguarding officer role descriptions in the model policies and how they're just so huge and uh it's certainly in the church that I was one of the churches I was most recently minister of um, until I moved just recently. And, um, you know, we consciously split that role down as a church council and said this is too big for any one person. But I wonder how many church councils, when they approve their safeguarding policy, take seriously what we're asking of one or maybe two individuals uh, and how as trustees they reflect on that. So the boundaries around roles and the size of roles uh, is so important. Um, and thirdly, we thought about our privilege. So are we aware of our own privilege? Um, I, 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 I recognise that we've not been around the room and shared what our preferred pronouns are this morning, but I'm going to make an assumption uh, that many of us here would identify as male or female, but we're a hugely female gathering. That's a really unusual place as a male Methodist minister and someone that would say that uh, to be. But do we think about our privilege when we're when we're sat thinking who might do this? Do we do we are we aware of our unconscious bias? Um, and I would hasten to suspect that there are many in our congregations who uh, are black, who are female, who are gay, and um, who are just not naturally thought of when we're looking for someone to take in roles. And that and that's something we need to name and start to own when we think about people using their gifts. I think that's really helpful. Thank you, David. I think the, the but picking up the, the asking people we don't know, we're very good at, at keeping, yeah, we, we know people, we know their gifts, we, and, and we just kind of go to the, it's the line of least resistance really, isn't it? We go to the people we know, and that exactly fits in with that, that being aware of our privilege, um, because then you become that, that tighter group of, it's always the same people doing the same, just so it, it emphasizes the otherness of people who are not in that group for whatever reason and that group develops its own sense of privilege and, and a position of power and, and people in those um kind of unofficial positions of power or groups of power is a huge concern within safeguarding because it's when those are misused and when those are particularly strong that that's when um 
real concerns can be raised and and, yeah. uh, and, and you get those misuses of that, that power, uh, which is what abuse is. So thank you for bringing that out. Um, I think if you've got anything else, uh, uh, anything else that you, well, no, sorry. I will ask, has anything, uh, any group got anything else that they're, they're burning to share? There are, you can put bits in the chat. We will be saving the chat again today. You can put things in the chat if you want to, but if, if we have, if it, any group has got anything they're particularly keen to share, if not, we'll move on a little bit. Oh, Dion. <clears throat> yeah hi we were we were just talking about people in roles and there was a few things but just the main thing that i want to share just now is that um the support for people within their roles so we started talking about how people have been in a role for so many years and then maybe you know they, they find it difficult to let go but you know the 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 support pastorally the the mentorship you know it's quite often people fill their roles and then and then they're left spiritual direction you know, and, and these things, most probably because church within itself is just trying to keep sometimes all the plates, all the plates spinning, but that's really important. So then when we come to those points where someone, you know, identifies with the role and, and struggles to give it up or, you know, when we've maybe got some power dynamics, maybe we need to do that relationship work, you know, for those who, who, are, who are in charge um, or to put someone in place. Does that make sense? It makes sense. It, it makes very good sense. I think you are spot on by saying that, that as as uh, an organize as organisations as local churches and, and and more widely in the church, we spend so much time in keeping the structures going, mm -hmm. keeping doing what we do because this is what we do, that we don't think about the people who are doing this and the cost to the people who are doing this. Mm -hmm. and what the support and skills we might be able to how they can best use it are they in the right role for the gift that they've got that's the first question or are they just in that role because they blinked at the wrong time in a church council <laughs> um it, it's that that kind of um and, and in some ways this this pause that we've had over the last year or this shuffling around of everything that we've had over the last year this is the time to be asking why are we doing this in our church? Is this fulfilling a need? What, what need is this fulfilling? Is this the time? Are we, do we need to prune to allow growth elsewhere to use a, a gardening metaphor? Um, and I think we, we have been increasingly relying on a dwindling number of tired volunteers. Yes. And a lot of them have, um, had a year off um, and they will have really appreciated that and a lot of them are now a year older and thinking do I actually want to be going back to all I was doing before yeah um so I think we we have some challenging times ahead and but I think it, we have some really good opportunities ahead if we grab them um so yeah I think that's that's a really helpful point thank you Gian We've got one or two things coming into the chat. I'm going to hand, um, I'm going to hand on to Katie now for the next section. But thank you for your reflections on that. Thank you. So we kind of started this session really thinking about our own personal giftings and our own skills that God has given each one of us and that's the inside of the box that that that's ours and that belongs to us that's what God has given us but we might recognize that in other people as well because as as has been mentioned we don't always recognize our own giftings but sometimes we might see a glimpse and a glimmer of what is in other people's boxes through the things that they say and through the things that they do but we've recognized through what Carolyn was saying that actually sometimes um, there are a lot of things on the outside of the box that are pushing in on us that stop us from releasing our giftings. And you've put some really useful things in the chat that I've just been reading and some really useful comments. And I'm sure that you had some really good conversations about all those things. Um, we could probably spend a few hours talking about the different things that might stop us from using our gifts. But we want, what we want to think about now really is about 
opening that box. And not just lifting the lid off the box and just being able to release some of our giftings. It is really about completely opening the box. And when we completely open the box, releasing our giftings, you'll see on the screen, there is that familiar shape that underpins our faith. This recognition that Christ died to give us life so that we may have life to the full. And living to the full is being able to use the gifts and skills that we feel that God's entrusted to us. Carolyn started this session with the reading from 1 Peter and in verse 410 it says each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. But how do we do that? How do we completely open the box? How do we do that for ourselves and how do we encourage that in other people? How do we encourage them to completely open their boxes and release the gifts that they feel that God has given us? Some of you may be thinking, I, 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 how does this all relate to safeguarding as well? How, how is safeguarding included within this? One of the things we were very adamant with this safeguarding conference is that we didn't want to just discuss DBS checks or safer recruitment, although those are very important aspects of safeguarding. But one thing that we are trying to change the culture of is that safeguarding is not just in those policies and procedures, it's in the well being of each one of us. It's important for each one of us to feel safe, to be able to be ourselves, truly ourselves, without that fear that comes with it. To be able to express ourselves openly and to use our gifts in a safe environment and in a safe space. So how do we do that? And how do we work towards that as, as churches? Well, you may have gathered, this isn't going a session where we are going to give you the answers necessarily because this session is called the gift of togetherness. And one thing that we've discovered is that actually having conversations and exploring these issues together is the most important thing in moving on that journey forwards with feeling safe enough to be able to do things within our churches. So we're actually going to go back into breakout rooms again, and we're going to spend a little bit longer in breakout rooms to discuss some of these more practical aspects of how we encourage people and ourselves to use our gifts. There are actually four questions, but it really doesn't matter um, which ones you take first. Uh, you can start at the bottom and work your way up, or you can start in the middle, it really doesn't matter. But this is what the general conversations would really be helpful within your breakout rooms. So what will it take for people to feel safe enough to open up their box and use their giftings within the church and community? And how can we encourage this with people of all ages and all abilities? The things holding us back from using our gifts, they don't automatically disappear. How can we learn to live with these things and how can we learn to work around these things? Is there anything practically that we can do? How does the church being a safe space play a part in us using our gifts? And again, what can we practically do to make people feel that it is a safe space? And the last question, how can we use good safeguarding practice to give us more confidence in feeling free to use our gifts? Again, if somebody in your group could potentially um, jot down a few things and, and maybe feedback at the end, that would be a really good opportunity to share some of the things that, that we've discussed and talked about and, and share good practice in relation to some of these things that we've had conversations about. So again, we're gonna go back into our flower breakout rooms um, to allow you time to discuss. Um, the questions are gonna be posted in the chat 
although you should have had the questions in an email in advance as well. So hopefully someone in the breakout room will have got those questions um, so that you've got them to be able to see them as you have your conversations. Um, um, I don't know whether any groups want to offer any feedback. What would be really useful if you can find the raise your hand uh, function underneath the reactions if you want to offer some feedback and what that does it just puts you to the top of the list so that we can spotlight you so that we can see you so if there's anybody from any of the groups wants to offer any feedback in relation to any of the questions or all of them whatever your discussions were ah helen oh you're on yeah, that's better. Yeah. Um, I was nominated, so I'm just going to do a, a very simple uh, summary. That's great. Thank you. Um, that may feed into the general discussion. Um, we spoke a little bit about the difference of being and doing, and how, in the narrative of filling jobs and filling roles, we we may change that narrative slightly and encourage individual discipleship and mm -hmm. vocation and calling, but recognizing that it is often a balance of our duty and our joy. Um, and maybe encouraging those who maybe don't have much of a joy in some very brilliant skills and encourage skill sharing. Yeah. Uh, in order to pass those on um but that to recognize that everybody has a vocation i've called you by name you are mine um where are we called um and and it, and just by changing that narrative slightly um you know to filling jobs and who's going to do this just changing it from doing to being and changing it from jobs to calling and vocation um, there, there was plenty else that we said, but uh, we were certainly very affirming of the sense of inclusion and the narrative of inclusion and had uh, a couple of uh, stories that, um, that exemplified that. Um, so thank you. Absolutely. That's a, um, that's a lovely way to interpret it as well, isn't it? As a calling and a vocation. And, and sometimes we do treat things as jobs, don't we? It's a job that needs to do it. But actually, is it your calling? Is it your vocation? Is it what you feel that God has gifted you in um, to, to do that? Um, I always think that about finance. We sometimes think of finance as just being a, you know, a thing that has to be done. But actually, you really need quite specific giftings and skills and, and a passion for numbers. Um, yeah. which not all of us have. Um, and to see uh, actually, you know, it being a treasurer as, as a ministry rather than just a job that needs doing is, is, is an important way of looking at it, isn't it? I and mean, that applies for lots of other roles as well. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Is there any? Um, oh, Lindsay. Yeah, um, we were sort of talking about what on the back of what was said earlier about being so difficult sometimes to fill the roles of stewards and things like that mm -hmm. um and sometimes it's just about knowing what's involved i think i use an example of a personal thing where years ago my gran was steward of a church for 30 odd years my granddad was treasurer of the same church and they took on just about every role within the church mm -hmm. and i just remember as a teenager my gran saying to me do whatever you want in the church, but never ever be a steward. And that stuck with me. And I was approached a few years ago to be a steward. And I did turn it down. I did say I wasn't going to do it. And I did sort of say, it's the one thing my grand told me never to do. Um, but I don't really know what's involved, if I'm honest. So I think it is sometimes just people knowing what is involved. I know what my grand did, but she did everything. So actually that probably isn't what just a steward would always do mm -hmm. um so i think sometimes it is people being aware of what's involved and telling you what's involved and being there to sort of hold your hand and initially and, and help you through it we were talking about sort of i said I, I i was asked sort of would you consider to be a steward now and i i wouldn't to be honest because i wear enough hats within the church um but that's another thing that we sort of said, you know, 
you've got to wear the right hat. Are you wearing the right hats? You know, that, that hat's got to fit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it is just like I say about people knowing what is involved without being sort of scared off by this mm. silly sort of job description that, if that makes sense, sorry, I don't know if I'm babbling a bit, but. Yeah, it's about being clear about what that role description is really and what it actually genuinely entails. And when there are things that are creeping into it, that actually aren't on that, on that in that within that role description. Um, it, it is important to really call that out, isn't it, and make sure that actually we we stick into what it is that we 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 know we should be doing, and also um, saying when we think things are too much, um, and giving permission and uh, to allow people to say actually this isn't this is too much for me. I can't I can't handle all of this job. Maybe we can delegate some other bits to other people or things like that. I think you're right. I think sometimes there's not a lot of clarity, is there? Um, one thing I've noticed working um, with with sort of multiple churches really um, is that the one role in one church differs completely to the roles and responsibilities in another church, but it might be called the same role, such as a pastoral carer or pastoral visitor, but actually in, in a different church, it's completely different. Um, so yeah, I think you're right. I think it's about tying things down, isn't it? And saying what actually this entails and, and clearly understanding it and, and having people to journey with us and to support us in that as well as to as we really explore what what that role is and, and how we should be doing it um but yeah thank you for that that's really helpful oh we've got a, a line of people now Alison I just wanted to to say I, I totally agree with what Lindsay said and and um in my church we split the role of steward so we have Sunday service coordinators who oversee the worship you know the aspect of things and then we have people who have taken on more of the, the traditional leadership role that's worked really well so we get happily get people coming forwards to do the Sunday service coordinator role knowing that they don't have to do the other bit um so and I would also mm -hmm. agree with what you're saying about people not knowing what the role is mm -hmm. uh, I needed someone to come and help me in junior church so we do junior church in pairs so I I plan it and do all that kind of thing I need just someone to come and help me and when I appealed nobody in our church nobody came forward and, and I thought well that's just bizarre because all I need you to do is turn up and just so the next week I, I wrote the, the role description in the notices and said this is what I want and then I got half a dozen people yeah and then they said oh we thought you'd want us to to plan the lesson we yeah. thought you'd want us and it's like no I just need you just to to turn up and join in and really what I want you to do is pray for the children mm -hmm. and develop a relationship with them so yeah. I think we need, you know, it, we need to get better at, 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 at those kind of things, really. That was all. Thank you. In, in sort of our safeguarding and, and safer recruitment, I mean, job descriptions is something that we promote. Um, but we do get a, a few funny looks when we bring that into conversation. Job description? Seriously? Why, why would we need a job description? But as, as you just highlighted, it's really important, isn't it, to give that clarity to what actually we want and what we need and may encourage other people to step forward if they, if they recognise clearly what the role is. Um, and it's about being honest with people, isn't it? About saying how much time something's going to take. Um, I know some people have great examples of where they've been asked to do something which, oh, well, well it'll only take you uh, half an hour per week. And then it's taken up something like five hours of their time each week. So, yeah, it's really important, isn't it? Um, I think Ruth has got, yeah, Ruth. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, uh, just a couple of things from our, our group. First of all, we sort of, we did share, that we're in different church environments and that was quite important because when we're thinking about, uh, we think about our own church and, and what we can do in that space and not all churches as we know are, are the same with the mix of ages, et cetera. Uh, it was good that you mentioned about, somebody mentioned about sharing roles um, that would work in, in, in bigger churches. We also talked about not feeling overwhelmed, um, that, that actually that's going to put people off, um, you know, if they, if they get sort of a, a role and then, and then more roles added onto it, that you would easily feel mm. sort of overwhelmed. We recognise that there's still quite a bit of uncertainty about what, what the new shape of our church is going to look like when, we, when we, we're, we're all back again. It's almost like yeah. a, a need to review where we are. So... I guess we felt some of the questions we couldn't fully answer because we, we don't know yet uh, on, on how that's going to be. 
and also about the importance of, of somebody being supported in the role that they are doing um, or having a chance to have a review or mm -hmm. some sort of um, feedback system so that like a reflection can, time where yeah, there's a check -in, in. you know in a lot of roles that professional roles that you have you have a automatic like super, yeah. supervision or you might have a, an annual review or something and perhaps because we've um we, we don't perhaps have that in the same way in in churches um but the picture is different whether you're in a, a large church of you know 100 or more people or a small church with sort of uh, 30 40 yeah. um you know that the, it's the different context altogether really aren't they yeah but uh, yeah i think you're right even allowing people to just have those conversations with someone albeit even formally actually how do you feel you're doing in your role and, and is, there, is there ways that we can support you or offer any help or giving people permission to say actually I don't want to do this anymore um sometimes we do put people in roles and I'm sure a lot of you will identify with this we kind of put people in roles and then we leave them there for the next 20 years without no exit route whatsoever um and, and no opportunity to even voice that so I think giving an opportunity you're right is really really important I always think of the analogy with Velcro and Teflon, that 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 you sort of some some roles are, are very much like Velcro, aren't they? They they that you have it and that's it. That's your job then. When perhaps we 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 all need a little bit of a coat of Teflon to actually just you know. So we we we're, we're a little bit non-stick, you know. Um, but, yeah, You're so. right. Absolutely. That's a brilliant way of looking at it. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much, Ruth. Um, what I would encourage you to do, I'll ask if there's anybody else that wants to speak, well, what I would encourage you to do, if you can type some things in the chat that you've discussed as well, because we will be saving the chat and we will be forwarding the chat round afterwards, um, because I'm sure there's some, some other really useful things that you've talked about um, in your group. So if you get time to do that just before you leave, if you type any comments in the chat, they will be saved and circulated afterwards. Um, was there anything else that anybody just wanted to contribute before we just um, close our time together? No, I don't think anyone else is raising the hand. Um, that's excellent. Um, yep, yeah, some great things coming in the chat um, about job descriptions. Um, helps us address in appropriate ways when boundaries are crossed and blurred, absolutely. Um, yeah, softening the approach of, of job description, absolutely. Again, yeah, we can use more sort of informal language with things like this. Um, and, and Shana, just district administrator, has just put chat will be anonymized. So um, feel free to put what you want in the chat. We're not going to put your names with your, your comments. So if there's something that you wanted to make in there, we're, we're a little bit frightened of doing so, just in case somebody from your church found out that you've made that comment, then, then please don't worry about that. Um, and again, just another chat coming in, but which follows on from yesterday. Wellbeing needs um, is to give anyone all about wellbeing. Yeah, that's really equally important. Right, um, Carolyn, I'm going to hand back over to you. But as I say, if you can, if you can put any more chat, uh, more comments in the chat before you leave that would be really um, useful uh, in sharing that um, ideas and good practice thanks Carolyn thank you Katie um, it, it it feels that, that this week has um, has flowed together very well and a lot of focus um, a, a lot of focus picking up on that that last bit of uh, the chat to do with well-being and looking after ourselves I know um, I know I had uh, had some meetings with uh, all my superintendents and circuit safeguarding officers um, a month or so ago, uh, and I said um, I said that at the moment I feel like I'm I'm standing standing on the edge of something in this job, and I can't quite see. I know that there's change coming, I know because of the outcomes of ICSA uh, and changes in legislation that things are going to change to do with safeguarding some of the the, the 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 fallouts in our church life over the last year things are going to be changing the way we work is going to be changing none of us can see quite what that looks like we know that 
the foundation module training is now online and being delivered online. And when we are allowed to meet face to face, that's going to be able to um, be delivered face to face again. We know that that um, we are going to be able to deliver the advanced module in a, a changed format. We're going to be able to deliver that online. Um, that's not been finalised yet. The pilot has just finished, and, and districts will be letting and the DSOs will be letting you know the dates when we can do that. But these take, we will again still be able to deliver face to face when we're allowed to. But all these changes, all these things, it, it does just kind of chip away at us um, in, in all areas of our life. And so some of the, the themes, those of you been able to come to the sessions this week, and, and hopefully those who haven't will be able to catch up with some of the videos when they're available. I think it's really been quite an important thing for us to be able to step back and, and just have space in our busyness to reflect on and all of things. And we are so grateful, so grateful for your support this week. When we started the conversations around this back in the autumn, we genuinely didn't know that we would still be in a form of lockdown. We didn't know whether churches would be open. We didn't know whether we would be back to doing face-to-face -face things, but what we we had no idea what was life was going to be like at this point. We we it, it felt like a, a a step of a step of faith. We didn't know whether we were going to get six at each session or sixty at each session. We know it's been nearer sixty, and some um, some dates is days it's been a lot more than that so we are incredibly grateful for your support through the week um, and we hope if you've enjoyed it once the recordings are available you can share those with relevant groups in your churches I, I am going to do some thank yous and I'm going to thank our our tech team um, and th th some of whom are here um, and some who aren't and it's taken a lot of work um, to get this going. I particularly want to thank Catherine from the Sheffield District who has managed all the Zoom stuff, all the bookings, um, and it has been seamless. And I know you're hiding, lurking somewhere in the background, Catherine, and you're probably blushing, but I just want to acknowledge our absolute thanks for all that you've done this week, because um, I don't think we could have done it without you. And, and thank you to Sean and Liddy and Kira and Sam, who've also been helping. Um, and Elias as well, who's not been able to be here this week, has helped with putting all the publicity and everything together. So it's been a it's been a huge team effort and it's been great working with Katie and Alison on this. Um, and thank you all for coming. We're gonna draw these face-to-face -face sessions to a close with a face-to-face -face session, Zoom sessions. You know what I mean, I can see your faces. Um, we're gonna draw these to a close with some, some devotions. Now I would encourage you to um, uh, watch the act of worship that's online. Um, there's a really good message delivered by Kerry Tankard, the uh, chair of um, Yorkshire West and input from the other chairs as well. Um, so before we head out to the rest of our days, just some final prayers. May we be like good stewards of the manifold grace of God and serve one another with whatever gifts each of us have received. May we walk alongside others in a respectful and honouring way. May we create spaces that are sacred and safe, that serve all in our communities. May we learn to find those things from which we can draw strength and resilience. May we learn to see you in all those we encounter in our lives. To God who blesses us beyond our imagining, who loves us beyond our dreaming, who forgives us beyond our deserving and who uses us beyond our hoping, 
be praise and thanksgiving, honour and adoration, now and always. Amen. Thank you all and enjoy the rest of your Saturday. <laughs>